Yo, my beautiful people in Webtown, welcome back to Crypto Comics. You know, yesterday we were talking about Hellshock from Image Comics, and we've been talking about independent comics. You know, I worked on this Legends of the Lone Wolf that's available on Indiegogo right now. And that Hellshock yesterday reminded me of an independent comic in my collection. Uh, there's actually a few of them here. I got a stack to share with you here today. This is Bloodshed Number no. Zero. This is from a little independent company out of Southern California called Damage Comics. This was Bloodshed Number no. Zero. It was limited to 3,000 copies. As you can see right here, this is number 2,118 of 3,000. I know that looks like it says 700, but it's, it's 3,000. This was written and laid out by Gerald Sanchez and penciled by Lionel Ordaz. These guys were out of Linwood, California. This is 1993. The height of alternative music, grunge music, if you will. And uh, I just thought I'd share this because it's, it's what I love, you know. Um, I'm not necessarily saying this comic. It's the concept that anybody, anybody out there, you and me, we can make a comic book, and we can put it out there for the world to see. And if people like it enough, we'll get to make another issue, and another issue, and another issue. Including this issue zero, there were six total Bloodshed comics in their initial run, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, this doesn't have any words in it for, you know, the first dozen pages. It's just art, so I'm just going to flip through it and let you kind of study it a little bit. Well, I talk about uh, the uniqueness of independent comics. And this is a, very clearly a comic book that was inspired by The Crow, as many, many things were back then, you know. Uh, if it wasn't for The Crow, I don't think industrial music would have became popular. At least not in America. Still in Germany, I'm sure, yeah. But what I love about independent comics is that when you buy these type of books, you're giving an artist and a writer an opportunity to practice their skills in creating sequential art. And Lionel does a good job with his sequential art, you know? I mean, it, this is an independent comic book, but he's, uh, he's more skilled than you see in the average indie comic that's out there. And there are many out there now, especially with the advent of the internet, you know, really anybody can make their comic and publish it online for people to read for free. I myself, I'm partial to printed comics. So uh, all my books are in print form. Uh, there will be some that are digital, but uh, I myself, I, I prefer to hold that book in my hands and read it. It's just, a, it's a different experience. It's a different feel, as was pretty evident when I unboxed the Lone Wolf issue number one a few weeks ago. That was entirely different than reading it on the computer. I had read it on the computer right before I made the video and opened the box that Doug had sent me with my physical copies in it. And it was, it was an entirely experience. I was actually kind of at a loss for words as I looked through it. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that difference. And it convinced me that uh, physical is the way to go. Now, I personally buy a lot of digital comics through Indiegogo because I want to contribute to a young artist, but I also want to make sure I'm going to get my money's worth if I decide to back a physical copy. And uh, there are, well, let's face it, you know, uh, Comicsgate has really seduced the canine when it comes to delivering books on time. And that movement was built with the promise of books being delivered on time. And if you're a, a young creator, you know, it's your first or second book, I don't expect you to deliver on time. But I do expect you to deliver within 90 days of your projected date. And when you're not doing it, and even worse, when guys who have been around the industry for 20 years are months late on delivering their books... Uh, you basically make it so I have to protect my wallet a little bit more. And so I don't back a lot of physical books. You have to really prove yourself to me now to get my money for a physical book. I will give you a chance digitally, though, as long as you have a reasonable price. And I know for myself as, as a writer that, uh, yeah, it does cost some money if you can't draw. And I, uh, I can draw, but I'm certainly not going to make anyone out there pay money to look at my art because it's not good. So I have to hire an artist who is much better than me. Uh, but when I hire that artist, I do expect a quality. Uh, if you have the ability to draw as good as Lionel here, I would work with you on a book and do a 50-50 split. Uh, but if you, if you uh, 
have a lot of experience drawing, I'll pay you because I know you're going to give people their money's worth. I know that my writing is giving people their money's worth because I've actually sold my writing. And so I have confidence in my own abilities to give you a story you want. This is awesome. Look at this. Obviously, this is not for kids, uh, but I really respect a writer who doesn't need to write, who just uh, lets the words tell the stories, you know. There's a, a rule in writing. It's show, don't tell. And the best writers are writers who are confident enough to show and not tell. He could have filled this up with dialogue. He could easily fill this up with dialogue and a narrative flow, but he doesn't have to do that. And we're not going to get into some writing until we get through this book halfway. Dying for Outlaw Comics? I love this because they. This is an independent distributor out of La Mirinda, California. This was Raw Comics. I don't know if they still exist. You know, I'm not going to tell you to call this phone number, but it'd be interesting to find out if they're still around. And they actually distributed for all these independent companies, which is really awesome. Asia Blue Comics, Alpha Productions, Anarchy Press, Antarctic Press, Anubis Press, Blackbird, Black Diamond, Blazer Studio, Blue Comet, Boneyard Press, Chaos Comics, Comico, Conquest, Continuum, Cry for Dawn, and it goes on and on. And uh, here we have a very, very graphic picture. Uh, the guy who sold me this comic would have gone to jail for selling this to me when I was a kid. I'm not going to comment exactly what's in that image, but I'm sure you can tell. And then, of course, here, uh, Damage is selling some stuff. Limited edition prints available, limited to 200. Some more art here. And as you can see, this guy, you know, he's got some talent. And uh, his talent grows over the years. They started this book in 93. They did six issues. It went till 1997. And his artwork did improve with each passing issue, which is what you want to happen when people draw comics. They should get better. They should improve. If your work isn't improving, maybe you need to take some classes, seek out some help, some advice to get your work up to snuff so that people want to pay money for it. So as I said, this Bloodshed series ran for six issues from 93 to 97. They also did a two-issue miniseries called Bloodshed M in 96. And then in 97, they put out a single issue called Bloodshed Lunatic's Fringe. Also in 97, they did the Bloodshed Requiem Halloween special. These gentlemen were not heard of for seven years after, that, after their run on Bloodshed ended. And they came back and did another two-issue comic book called Ashes in 2004 and 2005. I unfortunately don't have those, and I, I don't know where to find them. Maybe they'll pop up on eBay someday. They're not at mycomicshop.com, though. I can tell you that. Now, all of a sudden, we get to this image of guys with guns. And this actually, I turned the page, and I was like, whoa, am I in a Deathblow comic? Where's Jim Lee? Does he know about this? Kind of gave me that vibe. And all of a sudden, don't, don't, don't destroy the page. Careful with the book. There we go. Vent out and secure the perimeter. As you can see, this is lettered by hand. So we're in position. Perfect. Proceed to terminate the subject. I was never really sure what exactly was happening right here. Don't know. Huh? Oh, shit. Um, unit 5 to Unit 2, I believe I found something. Yeah, you found a person who has been... had their head cut off, and they've been stuck on a pike. Jeez. Sir, we found another body. Then he can't be far. Not a word to base until we found the grave. Yes, sir. Huh? Blam, 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 blam. This is very stunning imagery. This reminds me of the art from Alvin Schwartz's Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This is very talented. Very graphic. It's brutal. It's violent. It's very talented. This is obviously not a book for kids under the age of 13, especially not with that, uh, that graphic nudity we saw there earlier. 
I think they got him. That, this is why you need an editor. That question mark shouldn't be there. And I, I've noticed question marks throughout the comics I have, the Bloodshed comics I have. There are, there are little errors that an editor would have picked up on. Sir, Team 2 has located the grave. Perfect. Proceed as planned. I'll be there shortly. This will only take a minute. He blows this guy's head off. Holy crap. Say goodbye, number five. Number seven, clean up number five. What's going on here? We don't know. Got to keep reading to find out, I guess. They start digging up this grave. Digging in, we're digging and we're digging and we're digging. And we come to, finally, the coffin. They hoist that coffin out of the ground. They open it up. What the hell is this? See, there we have an exclamation point. We should have a question mark. It's okay to have the exclamation point, but only if you're going to put a question mark before it, because this is a question to be continued. And he's got a, a doll of a, you know, maybe like the size of a two-year-old carved out of what I think is wood. It struck me as a wooden doll. And then, old boy here, the punk rock industrial clown, like flips out here, heavy metal clown flips out. To be continued to be continued. Next issue. More stuff is happening. A little boy's very angry. Uh, a statue of an angel melts. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Pin up. Welcome. Welcome to hell. You know, as a kid, they would always tell me how hell's supposed to be this blazing inferno. Guess what? They lied. It's cold as fuck down here. And it smells, it smells of blood and sweat pollute the air down here. This is grammatically incorrect. Smells of blood and sweat pollute the air down here. It should just be the smell of blood and sweat pollute the air down here. Here we have children shackled, being led. These kids being kicked by these adults. Welcome to hell, where the slaves are born and bred by the devils themselves. See, another error. Born and breed by the devils themselves. No, born and bred. Pain, agony, despair, suffering. Welcome to hell. Welcome to the wastelands. What does that mean? I have no clue. Not, not at a one. There's another piece of pinup art, though. So, this is just a good example of what you can do in independent comics. They printed 3,000 of these bloodshed number zeros, and they went to the San Diego Comic Con. And keep in mind, this is back in 93. And they sold out. They only had 125 left when they left that convention. That's what you want to do with your comic. Then, bloodshed number one came out. And this is actually really cool. So it came, we'll go through this first, right? Bloodshed commemorative edition number one. This certificate of authenticity, or what we like to call death certificate, certifies that this special commemorative edition has been officially laid to rest by the creative team of Lionel Ordaz and Gerald Sanchez. Enclosed should be a signed and numbered Bloodshed Number 1, first printing, a specially made, correlatively signed and numbered death certificate, and a surprise bonus. Enjoy. This is number 600 out of 1,000, signed by the coroner, and it came front and back. Look at that. Boom. Boom. Oh, big reveal. There you go. Also came with uh, a card, and this card's very interesting. This is signed. This is the Bloodshed card. Turn it over, and it says, Independent Universe. Card number 51. What the heck? This is probably the rarest comic book card set in history, if there have been at least 51 of these bad boys. I've never seen anything like it before. I, I'm very interested in finding out what card number 1 through 50 are all about. Bloodshed. Crazy? Crazy. What are you, mad? I'm not crazy. I'm happy. See? The publisher, Damage, in Linwood, California. List the writer and the artist. And this is a collector's card set. Copyright 1994. Dilemma Productions. Okay, I wonder what the dilemma was. Now we get into Bloodshed number 1 with a stunning art. And what I love is that all of these have this cardstock cover. Every single issue of Bloodshed has a cardstock cover. There you go. See it signed, numbered, sexy. In hell, no one can hear you scream. Welcome to hell. 
Bloodshed Act 2, Torment. The sympathetic version. Interesting. It means that there is another version. There are uh, four, no, five different versions of this comic book, apparently. At least with five different covers. I don't know what the sympathetic version means. So uh, I guess I'd maybe have to go pick up the others. I know that a few of these are available on mycomicshop.com. Soundtrack. This issue, produced and directed exclusively under the influence of Nirvana, Coma, the live bootleg, Nine Inch Nails, Downward Spiral. So there you go. And this came out in 1994. It was printed in hell. Beware of children. They bite back. Interesting art there. That's nice. You get into this and you see some similarities between issue number zero. They, they used uh, some of the same panels, some of the same pages. Where? Where am I? How did I get here? This, this is insane. I don't belong here. There's, there's something irresistible here. Something undeniable. Danger? Death? See these question marks? Those question marks shouldn't be here. That's what happens when you don't have an editor. I don't belong here, and yet I find myself here, question mark, among the dead, or the soon-to-be dead, lots of question marks, strange, I don't know how I, dis I don't know how I escaped, or how I got here, or where here is for that matter, it's all familiar, as, as if I've been here before, so we really pick up right where bloodshed number zero left off with these guys digging this grave. And here we go. See, this is image uh, is very similar from the first one. What the hell is this? And it's the wooden doll. And this comic goes on. Again, plugging independent comics. Recycled imagery from issue zero. Here we have this child is murdered. And he's very upset. Hey, over here. Huh? Joseph, you're, you're really alive? What, you don't remember? How you just stood there? How you just left me there? To die? No, it's, it's not true. The man said, and you believed him? I, look at her. Look at what you've done. What's going on in this comic? I, I'm not really sure. Look! Look at all the suffering you've caused. All the pain you've inflicted upon us. It's because of you we no longer bow down before her. Don't you realize what you've done? To mom? To dad? To me? To everyone? No. Stop! Ice cream cones. This ice cream is a theme in this comic book. It's not true. It's not my fault. They have you. It's, it's not my fault. You're dead. Or alive. Or... This guy's got some sort of documents, and now he's holding a gun to the kid's head with the documents? I don't know. No! They look like blueprints, to be honest. You've caused enough suffering. I'm taking you with me now. He turns into a skeleton. Back to hell! Pretty scary, huh? And, ooh, graphic. Now that's graphic. See? Yeah, this, this skeleton pops up behind him. Hell. Fine. In that case, let's go. It seems like these are kind of out of order. Again, this is one of those pages where you could have used an editor to maybe help this uh, make a little more sense. I guess I assume he turns, blows him up, turns back to the kid, puts a gun on the kid who seems like it's maybe his little brother. So what are you going to do? Kill me again? Ha! He drops the ice cream cone. Go ahead. Do it. I'm not afraid. And we flash back to, you know, I assume when he was killed the first time in real life. And he drops the gun and uh, he's speechless. A hand touches him on the shoulder. I got something for you. And then they fight. How's it feel, huh? How's it feel to be on the receiving end? Well, get up. And this is a guy that he beat the hell out of in issue number zero. I said, 
uh, a dream? Just a dream. A bad dream. And then you have this gang that's breaking into this warehouse where a Korean gang has been storing a lot of stolen electronics. You see all these VCRs? VCRs, uh, you put a tape in it and it would play a movie, kids. Uh, I'm not sure if you know what a tape even is. Um, uh, it, was, uh, it was before DVD, before, and, that, and that was before MP4. So if you're watching this in the future, just look up v VCR and VHS tape. So they're stealing all this stuff out of here, and this guy's like, oh, I gotta spray paint real quick. We gotta tag this up. Oh, I'm gonna write my name. My name's Heaven. Okay. This guy's name is Vile. Hey, Vile, what's going on? Idiot, blah, blah. Bad dream? Only a bad dream? Bad dream? Is this video like a bad dream for you? Tell me in the comments below. I like this. I like this page. This is a good splash page. It's uh, kind of reminiscent of the Joker, isn't it? Hmm. And he comes across the guy who's doing the spray painting, Heaven. Stupid drunk. Joseph? Joseph, is that you? You, you really alive? What? Look, you talking to me, drunk? Some man gave me this. See? He holds up the documents. I don't know, the blueprints, whatever that is. I said you were dead. Oh, look, I even got you the ice cream I promised. So, you know, obviously our, our boy here is having some serious delusions. His name is, is Mr. Cobain. I don't know what his first name is yet, but his last name is Cobain. So you know that this was definitely made in the early to mid-90s. Still that ice cream theme going on here. Really? S.A.? You're crazy. He, he said if I don't help him, heaven, let's go! He'd, all right, I'm coming. Joseph? Ah! Joseph, wait. Huh? Where are you going? Bitch! Don't you ever put your hands on me, dog. Kicks him in the face. Locks him in. Joseph! To be continued? God, these question marks are killing me. Okay. So, let's see what Lionel has to say here about this, uh, about this little gem. Welcome one and all to Bloodshed number one. What you hold in your hands, my friends, is four long years of hard work. Four long years of scripting and rescripting. I hope you enjoy this book as much as we enjoyed making it. For those of you who weren't able to attend this year's San Diego Comic Con, let me tell you, it was great. We premiered our first book, Bloodshed Number no. 0, which we practically sold out of. Only 125 of 3,000 left. And a signed and numbered limited edition of our first issue featuring the first installment of a backup story I'm doing entitled the Wastelands. For those of you who missed it, don't worry. It'll continue in the second issue. Hopefully, after the conclusion of the Bloodshed miniseries, I'll have my own ongoing full-color Wasteland series. Hopefully. So stick around, my friends. The best is yet to come. Lionel. Now what about Gerald Sanchez? What does he have to say? Wait, you ask. Act 2? When the hell did Act 1 come out? Ah! If you're a completist, you're going to love this. Act 1 took place in the pages of Damage Book Zero, aka Bloodshed Number Zero, which was formally premiered at this year's San Diego Comic Con, where it sold out before the conclusion of the four-day event. Does the book contain a secret origin, a set of chromium cards, or other gimmick of such nature which all need to understand the upcoming series, you ask? No. The book, our first, was merely a prelude of sorts, a chance for us to experiment and learn. No one has to buy the book to understand the upcoming issues. But if you want one, Gerald Sanchez. And now we have him holding the doll, the wooden carved doll, and this, uh, and he's got an ice cream cone in his hand there, right? Hello, Mr. Cobain. Don't worry about your little <laughs> brother. He's fine for now. The asylum, tomorrow. And by the way, Bring some ice cream. Hmm. Very interesting. Hmm. Fall of 94. 295. How about that, man? Even with this cardstock, still, still cheaper than uh, your Marvel Comics today. But wait, there's more. So Bloodshed just kept going. And uh, this is Bloodshed 5. This is from 1997. And you can see, like, the painted covers, uh, they don't stop. They don't stop. These guys uh, do a great job. 
And the artwork just keeps improving. Lionel gets an opportunity to really uh, craft his skills here. And that's, uh, like I said, what I love about indie comics is the opportunity it affords young artists and young writers to hone their skill set. Lies, part five of seven. Act nine, heaven or hell, heaven or bliss. What does all this mean? I don't know, but this is kind of an interesting story. So they'd made Bloodshed number four, and the package from the printer that was sent from UPS got like lost and was stuck on this late train. So they were forced to put out Bloodshed issue number five before they released issue number four, which really sucks. But as you can see, uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of skim through this. Uh, Lionel's artwork is improving. His ability to lay out pages sequentially has vastly improved. It's just an increasing skill set over the course of a few years. Now imagine if these guys had been able to make a book once every other month, even just once a quarter. Uh, his skills would have increased exponentially. And they just kept going, you know, these guys hustled, man. These guys hustled for a few years trying to get books off the ground. Here's Bloodshed Requiem, the Halloween special. And this one they actually, this is nice. I really like the use of Whiteout. They do a good job with this. And uh, this has actually got a few different people working on it. There's some pinups by various artists. It really kind of, actually kind of reminds me of the uh, Legends of the Lone Wolf book that uh, I'm doing with Doug Garrett and Mior Munir. Uh, we have uh, multiple writers and multiple artists all telling different tales for this massive 80-page anthology book. And uh, this might be my favorite one. This has a lot of depth in it. A lot of depth. Like, really take a minute to take that in. Uh, it's, it's too bad it's in black and white, you know? This is a nice poster print. This person has some serious talent. And uh, I can actually tell you who that is if we go to the front. Pete Cooper. And Pete is spelled P-E-E-T. I don't know if Pete Cooper uh, ever got a career in comics, but he certainly had the skill set to warrant one. My goodness. We have Julian Aguilera drew this one. And uh, then you get a story by Chris Armenta with art by Landon Gerard. And this is uh, entirely different than Lionel's artwork, as you can see. And this is really what independent comics are supposed to be doing, is giving new artists an opportunity to succeed, an opportunity to see their name in print, an opportunity to get their name out there so people can recognize their talent and hire them for other books. And... Uh, that's, this is what I love about indie comics. You know, these guys, they, they may not have made it, but, you know, it's cool to me that here I am, 25 years later, able to look back on the indie comics of the past and see some guys who put in some tremendously hard work trying to get their stuff out there, trying to make a name for themselves in the comic book industry and... And not every creator you back is going to make it. But I guarantee you, you know, if you, if you look around Indiegogo, you find some talented people. And those people, hopefully, God willing, fans willing, will be the future of this industry. An industry that is teetering on the brink of collapse in some ways. But an industry that also has the potential to still have a very bright future. If you have the, the right leadership in the right positions. Right now that leadership doesn't seem to be there, but you never know what tomorrow brings. So keep supporting independent comic books. Keep supporting the writers and the artists of tomorrow. And you can do that right now by going to Indiegogo.com and backing an independently published book. It doesn't have to be Legends of the Lone Wolf. It doesn't have to be my book, but go find something, back something. You don't have to give all of your money to Marvel and DC and Image and Valiant. There is a, a legion of independent creators out there making books that you might not know anything about. But you'll find out if you, 
If you spend a little time on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, you're guaranteed to find a few books that'll wet your whistle. So as always, thanks for sticking around, Crypto Comics. Please give this video and every video you watch here a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I will see you tomorrow with a completely different comic book that just might blow your mind. Legends of the Lone Wolf. 80 page full color anthology. With your support, we will bring you a perfect bound 80 page book of the highest quality. Everyone involved has donated their time and talent and all the money will go to printing and shipping before any of the creators turn a profit. Unlike other anthology books, Legends of the Lone Wolf contains a 38 page feature length supernatural story. That's nearly twice the size of a regular comic book. This campaign is the only way to get the variant aged edition of Lone Wolf's number one. This highly unique version of our first issue will be printed on a stunning aged newsprint and features a cover by the one and the only Mutt Man. So don't sit on your hands, Wolfomaniacs. You're gonna have to get out there and grab a copy for yourself. Ooh, yeah!